What's up? What's up? What's up? Welcome. Welcome. Welcome one and all. Welcome everyone. Come on down my people. Come on down. Come on down. Come on down. Good day. Good afternoon. Good night. It's night some places, right? Uh, bonjour. Hope you guys are having an awesome day. Come on down guys. Let me know where you're locked in from. It is Wednesday, Wednesday the 19th of October. It is kind of like the split um, between my dad used to celebrate two birthdays, the 19th and the 20th. May so continue to rest in peace. So today would have been his birthday and then tomorrow would have been his birthday too. Because you know how they used to do back in the day. They would, they would um, you'd be born on one day and registered on the next. So they would just give you the day that you register. Yes. So in as much as he, uh, he said he thinks he was born on the 19th, he believes strongly that he was born on the 19th or he believed i should say however he celebrated on the 19th and the 20th so uh today is the 19th and i'm so happy to be back here hi guys come on down come on down when you come down drop your flag let me know good night you know you know that she know how we do you know i like when people come in and they know how to do it so drop a flag how are you guys doing uh, joining us on youtube a few folks are joining us on Facebook. Um, we're also on Twitter, my people. We're on Twitter. So we're everywhere. We're on Facebook, we're on YouTube, we're on Twitter. Um, where else we be? Where else Sabina? We're on my page. So on my Jail Joseph page. We are on my personal profile page. That's all we just everywhere. We do the aim today. Yes. It's so good to, to have you guys join us. Hi Janice, hi Delma, hi guys. Oh my God, is that Eve? Eve, hi Eve. I hope you guys are having an awesome Wednesday evening. Um, I just want to big up. Um, I don't know if you guys know this in my, my lip my lip gloss. So I'm wearing a lip gloss. I don't know. Only I don't know the color name, but it's by uh, Dylan Fidel, and I love. Okay, you know I'm more of like a lipstick kind of gal. However, however, um, I tried this uh, because I was looking for a lip gloss that I could wear. Sometimes when I have a show that gives me like a natural, like an unatural kind of look. And you know, for us black girls, sometimes looking for a nude lipstick is like looking for a white person's nude lipstick or lip gloss. So um, I like the fact that Dylan understood the assignment and she represents for the us colored girls. Um, of course, she's from Dominica, so big up to Dalen one time, and she has her own line of lip glosses, and I am, I don't know the name, because I think I, I peeled it off, because I have a bad habit of doing that. Um, sorry, guys, but when I find a name, I will definitely drop it in the box, and if you want to know the name, just tag me and tell me, Jill, give me the name, okay, and I will make sure to get it to you after the show, but it goes on really nice, see? Mm, see that? Mm. Looking good. We have a great show for you tonight. I am so excited to be coming to you live again on the live show. Um, I want to just shout out all the fans, all the friends, all those of you who continuously show support to my show. Without you, there'll be no me. And I'm so thankful for you, of course. So thank you very much, guys, for all of your support, um, all of the love. Those of you who've been supporting me monetarily, you know, those... Chings. I appreciate you. I know I see I just see them when they popping up in the account. For some of you, I reach out to y'all. For some of you, you know, I don't know who you are because you remain, you choose to remain anonymous. And that's okay. Um, but I'm thankful for those of you who share your support to the show by dropping those gems into my bank account. Because as a creative, it is hard to get make money sometimes. And you showing me love shows that you appreciate my content. And that you want to continue supporting me and you want me to continue to do this okay so i just want to um to welcome you all today we're going to be talking to the teacher strategist and before i go into the full spill on the teacher strategist and um, and who she is and what she does and all of that rate um but we're going to be getting into in just a little bit um i just want uh to to mention that uh the vanity show i don't know if you guys are familiar with vanessa bruno vanessa bruno and i were both um we both held down uh, a show on vibes radio 
Um, so she used to do Vanessa's Best and I would do the Joy and Love Hour in the morning. And she started her own show on YouTube and it's called The Vanity Show. And last Wednesday, she actually did a show that um, it was an episode on six effective tips for online teaching with her guest, Olivia. I think her last name is Odilike. Odilike, don't um, quote me. She, I'm not handing in. I don't have to spell it, pronounce it right. But that's her. Um, she had a guest on and they did um, six uh, effective tips. So you can check out her show. Um, and I also always want, like I always do, I want to encourage y'all. When y'all go, like, don't make us big. When y'all go to our YouTube pages, like, subscribe now. Just hit the subscribe button. It doesn't hurt all you. It doesn't take off blood from all you. It doesn't, you don't lose sweat. You don't lose anything. Just literally just drop in, you know, hitting that subscribe button and letting us know that you definitely um, connected with us. So, you know, appreciate that and appreciate the love and appreciate you know, the content, and that's how we know that you appreciate it, okay? By subscribing to our individual channel. So you can check that out. But today on this show, uh, we have uh, the teacher strategist who is Terry Vino. She's going to be joining us, and I had to do my little digging on her. And, you know, for those of you who don't know, Terry is Ophelia Marie, the, the Dominican lady. Um uh, you know, in Creole season, I want to think of a song of her. Lovely Dominique. Did she actually sing that? She's not singing that? No, not she's not singing that. Um, gosh, I can't remember none of Ophelia's songs now on the whim. I am so ashamed. And I know so many of Ophelia's songs. Anyways, she is the songstress, the lady of Dominica, Ophelia Marie. And I think she that is in the mountain on the Discover Dominica. Um, thing, but don't say I say. <laughs> but anyways, um, Mark Maria hasn't seen it yet for him to come and copyright that. Anyways. She is going to be joining us tonight. We're going to be chatting with her. And she is, um, when I when I checked her out, she supports teachers with transformational strategies to improve their skill set, um, to eliminate burnout, and regain their personal time to become highly effective teachers. She also supports students with performance uh, improvement systems uh, to excel at life. And she's going to be I, I think we're going to be playing like a little devil's advocate there because she's going to be giving us parents all the deeds and all what we need to know about what those little monkeys just be doing when we ha um when they're online yeah she's going to be telling us what to look up for um what are some of you know the things that we should be paying attention to because it's tough for us um moms and i say us because God, it is so much doing online school. And uh, those of you in Dominica, you know that's how it is. That's the, the, the new normal. We're now doing online school. So whether you're having technical issues connecting because probably your your internet probably dropped for a, a couple of seconds or you're probably stealing somebody Wi-Fi for you to, to send your child to school. Um, or you probably in some cases have no access to internet or you probably had to invest in portable devices. I know of some parents who've actually had to pay someone to watch their kids so they could go to work, like in the nature aisle, in 767. People have had to do what they need to do. Having kids who are already hooked on their devices or hooked on being online. I'm one of those moms, you know, hooked on being online or just simply trying to navigate this new normal we call online learning. I want to big up Carvel, who just joined us. And Carvel is actually the one who told me all about Terry. Um, and Carvel is tagging all her friends, all her mom friends, everybody who has, uh, who is, and y'all should do the same. Take a page off of Carvel's book and tag your friends, especially your moms and dads, you know, who are struggling, who are having a hard time trying to navigate this new normal of online learning and it's probably driving you insane like it's driving me insane i just want to welcome for the very first time on my show say hello to terry vino who's joining me hi terry hi hi everyone hi how are you? they're coming in you see they're coming in all of them coming in coming in coming in. i see that all of them coming in 
um they're coming in the chat and a lot of folks are tagging people um so ooh, lots of folks are coming on uh to to get to know all of the that's not there's a lot of stuff to know actually terry tell us oh, before yes. before we get into the gist of of what us parents should know about this online thing because if i go really really, too, really really close you will see how tired i am because of all of this computer staying on on a computer all the time and this is what's happening to our kids now yes. before we get into that can you give us a little intro uh, uh tell us a little bit about who you are we know we know you're ophelia's daughter and you you look like her eh? i don't find but i'll i'll take your word for it <laughs> <laughs> tell us a little bit about okay so i am from point michelle born and raised and uh, my parents decided to move to Coptal. I wasn't too happy, but I ended up loving it after. So, because I'm a nature girl, so I like the sea, I like the river, so it was a good fit. Um, I went to St. Luke's School in Port Michel, then Convent High School, then Six Form College, Sifo Call at the time. And then I migrated to Texas for more school, and then Massachusetts for more school. But in Dominica, I taught at Dominica Grammar School, then St. Joseph Campus or ITSS. And I used to do a lot of community stuff like flag wavers. I started the Barclays Bank flag wavers. Now I think National Bank flag wavers. So I did a lot and I, like you said, Ophelia is my mom. So I was involved in singing, dancing, a lot of cultural activities and when I moved to Texas, I was done with teaching because I was just so tired. I'm like, I need a break. I need to get out. So I went to do a degree in marketing and French because my goal was international travel, French markets, and so on. And when I graduated, I went right back into the classroom. <laughs> and it was a different system. I learned a lot, but again, after four years, I was like, uh-uh, teaching isn't for me. I need to do something else, which brought me to Massachusetts, which is where I still am. Um, I did an MBA in nonprofit management with a focus on education management because I wanted to help teachers to teach better. And I did, I was the director of graduate recruitment for a university in an office, nice office, but it was in the classroom. So I left and went right back into the classroom. And I've been back into the classroom for, let me see, eight years now. So I started in 1991, left twice, back into the classroom. And while I'm still in the classroom, I also coach teachers to, like you said, to teach better, more effectively, and to regain their personal time. And one of my other side jobs is um, recruiting students for university, um, international students. So my market is mostly West Africa, but I also recruit some students from Dominica and other Eastern Caribbean islands for university here. So it's all about education, but my main goal is supporting teachers and supporting students so they learn better, they teach better. Yeah, that's me in a nutshell. <laughs> it's so good. To, it's so good to meet you. I just put up the teacher strategies on 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 the the screen, and I'm watching. So I'm like, did I spell it right? Because the worst thing is, <laughs> I'm like, worst thing for a teacher and you spell it in the wrong jail. Like, a jackass. Uh, you you good. You got it right. <laughs> so I don't, I just say, but yeah, I spelled it right because you know I did the caps you know, when you go in between the, the letters. I, I'm like, oh gosh, you can't be spelled it spelled strategies wrong. But it's so <laughs> great to have you, and you have Thank such you. a world of experience in the teaching um, game. You know, it would be great to hear some of your tips. You know, even for for teachers. But today, I feel like we need to focus a lot on the parents, especially the parents yes. in Dominica. Because or in the Caribbean, because a lot of the Caribbean islands are on lockdown, mm -hmm. and as a result of lockdown, um, parents are forced now to keep their kids at home and do online learning. I know um, it's it hasn't been easy. A lot of parents are extremely stressed out about it. Uh, a lot of parents, you know, got the opportunity to navigate from 
being at work and then going home to work from home. So it might appear to be easier, you know, being home and you have to teach uh, or at least assist your kids in getting online. Mm -hmm. I have I have one that's online and I'm thinking of the parents that have two and three and four and five because people have different amounts of kids, different numbers of kids, right? Mm -hmm. How they're doing this, how they're coping, how they're ending up, how they how they're uh, actually able to to do their work and still focus on those children because those children have plenty tricks. Like I was there. Oh, yes. <laughs> plenty tricks and they will you will think that they online um you know in class and they probably watching naruto or they're probably watching playing roadblocks or they're probably doing something that they're not supposed to do so many yes. we've, we've established that many parents are struggling okay. how do we first of all how do we ensure that our kids actually log on and do what they're supposed to do what what are some of the things that we as parents need to first of all do okay so first of all relationship is important relationship with your kid and relationship with the kid's teacher so with the kid you it's like okay hey you're learning online what is the goal what is the purpose i know you want to play yes i agree but Think about it. If you study well, you do what you need to do, then your reward is you get promoted to you get promoted to the next class. If you don't learn, you stay back. What is your long-term goal? Now it's harder to convince the younger kids about that. Okay? So I'll tell you a little trick I use and I tell some of my parents to use in a while. But the relationship with your kid is very important. You know, you sit down with them. You know how to convince your kid to do something. So speak to them about, yes, I understand it is challenging, but this is why we're doing this. So speak to them. Be on the same wavelength. The second thing is the relationship with the teacher. Talk to the teacher. It could be via an email. You check in once a week, even if you don't read everything. But you show the teacher that you're interested in what is going on in the classroom. You're here to support your kid. Because on the teacher's side, they're frustrated themselves if they don't manage themselves, their time well. So they're not going to reach out to you every time your kid is doing something or not doing their work. You might only find out about it when the report card comes in. I was about to tell you this because last year during the pandemic, I remember close to almost the term was almost done. And I learned, you know, my son was not actually like doing what he needed to do in terms of like he would do what they sent to him um on, on, but he would not go check google classroom where there was work for him and he he had like i swear like 16 projects that he'd not completed 16 oh my god let me tell you right <laughs> cramming <laughs> i am not the only one because i spoke to some other people and they're like okay jail you're not the only one we we, we with you on that too how do we manage all of this? Because some of us have our full-time jobs, you know, like, exactly. like okay, you were giving us the tips. Finish giving us the tips. Right. So, so one is relationship. I, 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 relationship is important. And this, I tell my teachers the same thing. I'm like, look, the relationship you have with those kids, when my kids come in front of me and I'm teaching. So right now I'm back in the classroom full-time in person. But last year, well, from April 2020, it was online and we started last school year online as well luckily for us we were able to go back in person and we started in person this year but i tell them look you have to try your tricks and i gave them some tricks to keep kids engaged you know because the parents the the job of the parent is not to teach the kids the job of the parent is to support the kid Hey, are you doing your work? Are you doing what you need to do? Right? So the teacher is the one who has to, the academic side is the teacher's side. The parent's side is the mental stability, the emotional health. That is the parent's side. Mm -hmm. So a lot of parents are kind of crossing over into the teacher's side. And I always advise my teachers to not let that happen. You know? 
I, I'm glad you bring that up about the parents mm-hmm. and we're not there to teach and whatever, because I always said if this pandemic had happened when I was 10, my mother would not know what to do with the computer. <laughs> because my mother, I remember I we had to teach her how to use the computer. What what happens to the parents that don't know? about all of these google classroom and all of these different because now all these teachers are using all of these different apps like you know i remember like i learned kahoot in university and my son's like oh mommy you know about kahoot and i'm like my kids have it and, uh, like, <laughs> how, how do we become tech savvy because we have to now be checking people's our, our kids work and and keeping up to date with all of these things Like, is there a crash course in tech savvy? So you shouldn't have to have a crash course in in being tech savvy because, again, I I guide my teachers to give the kids a crash course. You know, some kids, six months old, they pick up a phone and they figure it out, right? So the kids, they already 100 years ahead of both parents and teachers. They got this. But you as a parent, you still want to know some about the technology, something about it, because those little tricksters will try and pull something over our eyes. So you have to know something. So even if you don't know, you all you tell them is, I am going to check your summary, your Google Classroom summary to see what you're missing. Whether or not you check it, you throw that in their face. I know about the summary, the parent summary, and I get it at the end of every week. So when I check the summary, I will know what you did and what you didn't do. So you let them know that whether or not you check it. Does that really exist? It does. It does. So that's the other thing I'm getting to. Ask your child's teacher to add you as a parent to the Google Classroom. And what it is, it's like a weekly digest of everything they did throughout the week. So you can see what is missing and what was turned in. So that just comes... You get it. And you don't have to check it every day because you as a parent, you're not there to sit down and go through everything every day. So you get that summary. Hey, these things are missing. Fix that. No. Okay. You want that ice cream in the fridge? No. Fix that. The phone you like there. Pass it. Fix that. Fix it. Yes. So you let them, you ask the teacher to add you to the Google Classroom. So you get the summary at the end of the week and you see what's missing. The other, the other thing you tell the kid is, I'm going to check your history. Whether or not you know how to check the computer history, they know. They know about the history. They know how to clear the history, but there are ways to go even behind that and check it. Okay. You tell them, you know, I know how to check the history. So when they hear that, they're like, wait, mommy, know how to check the history? Okay, I better behave myself, you know, and do my work, whether or not you know. So tell them you're going to check the Google summary, the Google Classroom summary. You're going to get it at the end of the week. And if you don't have it already, ask the teacher to add you. Because they don't have to communicate with you other than just adding you. And I tell the teachers... I hope parents are taking you. Yeah, I tell the teachers that too. I say, look. Add the key, add the parents to the Google Classroom so they can see what the kids are missing, what the kids turned in, and your life will be easier one way, and the parents' life will be easier because they're not checking every assignment. They're just looking for the summary, you know, once a week. Yeah, and then the history. Just throw the history. Yes. I was about to say, yes, make sure you're all taking notes. Your mom just popped in, big up to... Oh, she did? Yes. Hey, mom. She's here, she says... She says, in my day, what she says, I want to pull up what she says because she's, in my day, I wasn't half the teacher this lady Terry is. Oh, thank you, mama. (laughs) That's not true. You were a great teacher. Your your students still meet me and tell me about you. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, your mom is here. Okay, so so we've gotten the, the things that we can do to make sure that they're doing their work. Mm-hmm. So one of the things is stay in touch with the teacher, get them to add to Google Classroom. And then, you know, I'm actually taking this for myself. So it's not even just for for, for the people viewing. I'm taking those because I've been horrible at this. I'm also in school. I'm doing my master's. So like be doing that and still monitoring monitoring a nine-year-old is is a lot of work. And I tried to tell him, you know, I trust you. 
So, so just don't let me lose trust in you. Just do what you're supposed to do, please. You know, I like almost begging him. God, back in the day, I would do like my father and pull out a belt and give him two liquor belts. <laughs> Exactly. We, don't, we don't do this anymore. We don't do that anymore, right? Because exactly. Our bell does hurt, right? Mm -hmm. oh. so, so that's really, really good information. Mm -hmm. Now, a lot of our kids are online for games where they interact with their friends. Now they have school online. How exactly do, or what would you recommend in uh, a ways, in some ways in which we can manage our children's screen time because i find my son will be on from eight to two when it's school and he wants to be on from two to eight again you know like whether he's doing homework whether he's doing other stuff i try my best not to allow him to play but how do you manage screen time when you're not there you know to manage it <laughs> right especially you yourself like you said you have work, you have school, you have other commitments. So how do you manage the time? So another thing I tell teachers, you have to build in breaks into your time. Even if it's a 45 minute class, you have to build in breaks for yourself as well as for the students because no one wants to be sitting, just sitting at a desk. Like when I went remote, I bought an adjustable desk so I could stand to teach because sitting all day after, Less than the first week, I bought a desk. I'm like, uh-uh, this wasn't working for me. But for the kids now, they have to be in front of the teacher. So unless the teacher gives them a break, then they're stuck there. So what I advise my parents to do is, if you realize that your, your kid is in a class where they don't get breaks, speak to the teacher and say, hey, my kid needs a break. My kid is going to respect you, respect the class, but he or she is just going to step away for three to five minutes and come back. And once you communicate that with the teacher, if they're so pressed on teaching all their stuff and they don't want to give the kids a break, you tell them, my kid needs it, you know, for his or her emotional health, mental health, they need it. So... Most teachers are understanding when it comes to that, but you know, some are like, you know, but you know, your kid is your kid. You want the best for the kid and they need breaks and the teachers themselves. I don't know why some don't give breaks, but after school, the afternoon part, that is where the bribes come in. I tell my parents, bribe your kids. I'm not above bribing. And by bribing, I mean, <laughs> I mean, if you have money to give them, if it's a vacation they want, if it's a new game they want, for you to earn that extrinsic motivation then, for you to earn that thing that you want, you have to go outside and play. You have to take a break after an hour with your friends online. You have to give me a half hour break, okay? So some parents are like, no, it has to come from within and all of that. Fine. If that works for you, it never worked with my daughter. It's a bribing, you know? And it's a exactly. Because I'm from I within. Them, you know, <laughs> I tell them just like us, we go to work for money. That is an extrinsic motivation for us to go to work. So in the same way, your job is to go and play. Go mm -hmm. outside and play when you come in. Exactly. You'll get your phone back. Pass your phone. When you come back, you'll get it. But you have to give me a half hour outside after or online or something. Some parents are afraid to talk to their kids. Well, I, I did, I did, we, did that on, we did that on Sunday and you end up with bed. Oh my gosh. <laughs> wow. <laughs> because he's like, he was outside playing and he decided to go down into the grass and and going to look for passion fruit and end up with that food. All his body have bumps now from the last. So I don't know if I can bribe him again to go outside. <laughs> but tell him not to go down in the passion fruit. Alas. <laughs> My child said she was a nice child. She promised it. Yes, she was and still is a nice child. But yeah, I was not about bribing her. Hey. <laughs> Your parents are coming on. Your parents are some of your, some of your, your 
Oh, that's your daughter. My daughter, Clea Bino. Oh, yes. Yeah. So she said she was a nice child. <laughs> I agree, man. Like, make sure you tell, set the record straight the runtime, my girl. I agree with you. <laughs> okay, so, so you said, you know, it's okay to give incentives. Yes. So, them incentives for getting off, um, okay. off the career, the breaks between for the teachers. I know my son's school; they have quite a few breaks. Like, okay. I think they Good. teach for like fifteen minutes or so, mm -hmm. and, and they break, and they. If they go again 15 minutes and they break like they, they have their I, I was like all oh, at bricks won't you <laughs> but but I get yeah. it I yeah. get it yeah. it's it's super helpful anything else mm -hmm. that we can be doing besides the breaks or even the the incentives for going outside yes find a way to get them to de-stress and connect with their mindfulness so by that I mean get them to meditate, get them to listen to music, get them to put themselves in a space that is away, totally away from the computer. So even if they're not all playing and getting bed whoosh, but go, go, like music helps to change their focus, helps to recenter their energy. So if you can do something like that um, or read with them, especially the boys, they don't want to read but they'll quicker listen to music you know they would do something just do something that takes them out you uh, and it's a good way for you to bond with them go for a sea bath go for a walk you know do something with them that is totally away from screen time totally away from the house you know luckily y'all in da pressure no cold I already start to wear my coat and my boots <laughs> <laughs> my son always thinks so that it's like a punishment like trying really? to get him. like he is like and i really want to be honest so so he's this thing and so he will say and i can tell you they have tricks eh? oh yes so he will say i would say no screen time unless it's schoolwork and he'll pull up on youtube an educational program and he was Smart. like i'm that schoolwork and i'm like He's like, mommy, like I've read all the books in the house and he legit has read all the books, eh? Nice. Um, so and he went to my aunt's house like, for some time and he started reading her medical books and the kinds of things that he was finding out. I had to tell her to hide those books. <laughs> <laughs> and he was coming up and asking me all of these questions. And I was like, I was not prepared to answer them. So he's read all the books. So now he's <laughs> trying to bribe me now. No, no, instead of me bribing him, he's bribing me to watch an educational program so that he may stay on the computer because he finds he's like, There's nothing outside for me. Look at I get better with the last time I go outside, you know. Like, <laughs> yes, outside. yes. So, okay. so, how do I get away from or get him away from that? Okay, find him doing or oh, pull him to do uh, other things. I saw someone here say family night. Shelly said implement family nights or game nights you know try and do things that he likes to play let's try a different type of game monopoly checkers let's try something jacks we still have jacks in dominica i think so okay i was trying to teach more Romy and he was not interested but i'll try something else i'll try a different game try go fish you know so tell him yes you can go back and look you know, at your YouTube or go back and play your game, but come and play with me now. Let's play a little game together. You know, try and do something away from the screen. Because if you just tell them, shut down the screen and sit down there, they will put it back on. They will find something to do. One of my and, students... And he goes be between the... He says, well, you said no screen time. The house for the tablet. So now I'm on the laptop, no screen time. And then he goes on the phone. And so he, I'm like... I'm like, Rasta, I just tell you no screen time. He said, but you said no screen time in the moment I was on this screen. I'm no longer on this screen, I'm on another screen. <laughs> That's a little genius you have there. Yep. And speaking of screens, they have so many tricks on the screens, right? So, I was going to get to that. Yeah. Because they will wait when they will know how to, they know how to 
work those tabs so quickly. Like yep. Giovanni can flip between the tabs so quick. And earlier I was telling you what I do, what I normally look for. I, yes. I wanna wanna share. Yes, yeah, so guys, JL was telling me that she looks for the change of light on her son's face. So once she sees the change of light or flickering of lights, she knows he's looking at something or he's playing a game. And that is something I do as well. So I, well, my daughter is grown, but like in school, my students, so um, my school is a one-on-one -on -one school, meaning all the kids have a laptop, all the kids have a device. And that is something that we have to manage too. And you just see the change of light on their face. Now, one of my walls is a glass wall. So while they're, they're playing on their games, I'm like, you know that wall behind there is a mirror, right? And they just go, oh, I just see tabs closing. I'm like, Seriously? <laughs> You're not participating. I know something is up. But they have a lot of tricks. And what some of them do, the laptop is in front of them and they have the phone under the desk or on their lap. So they have you thinking they're looking at it, but their fingers going. I just look at their shoulders because you see the shoulders moving. So you know their fingers moving under the table and they, they're on their phones. So it's hard to keep up with all their tricks. It's really hard to keep up with it. So that's why I always recommend the Google summary. So you know, you don't have to be emailing the teacher all the time. You get the summary so you know. And then, you know, you can, of course, always email them and say, hey, I didn't see anything in the summary this week. Did you do any work? Because some teachers do that too, you know? So it's a good way to check and keep on top of it. You, you, I had some really good, some really good advice in terms of the, the, the lighting, but I want to, I want to somewhat reach out to like the, a lot of parents are really tired like mm -hmm. they're really tired and even all of what you said is all fair and well when you have three four five children and you have to go check every one of their summaries because they're all in a different grade or you have to you have to you probably had to separate them because one probably louder than the other so you have the one in one corner of the room and the next one, I know someone who had to split them up completely, put them in separate houses, you know, oh because gosh. because one is very distractive, you know, like he, he wants to engage in class and one is more quiet. How do you balance all of this as a parent? Like, I, I personally don't know how people do with being single parents and having kids. Like, I think I would probably have... Like I would go insane if I didn't have support, but from a lot of parents, they're going through it and they have to check all. Imagine after you come home from work, you probably reach home at six o'clock mm -hmm. and you check all the summaries and they probably doing homework. So you, but you tell them to go to your homework and they do homework and now you have to be watching to make sure all the lights not changing on their forehead to know what they're looking at to make sure that they actually doing their work because at eight o'clock when it's time for bed they'll tell you oh i forget to do this yep yep <laughs> how do we manage as parents how do we manage all of this okay so i'll answer that question with a story of one of the parents that i support so i was teaching two of her two of her sons and she had a daughter in the house as well so it was three of them the husband worked 12 hours i think so he was out of the house and she was in the house with them remotely. And she said, all I wanted to do was cook and clean. I didn't want to look at no kid, run up and down steps looking at the kids and so on. So the first thing I advise her to do is separate them. Now, not everyone has the space to separate physically. Mm -hmm. So you know what one of the kids did? He's like, oh, I'll just go in the bathroom. I said, you cannot just be in the bathroom. Oh, if someone needs it, I'll just come out and let them use it. I'm like, okay whatever works now his main issue was his wi-fi connectivity and he said the bathroom had the best wi-fi so the mother was okay with it everyone in the house was okay one bathroom he just used to get up let them use it go back in i'm like whatever works for you and the sister was in another um section of the house and the brother was in the parents room so i told her at the end of the day at the end of the school day make a deal with your kid you don't have to be running up and down after them, but 
when school is done, come and show me what you did and what you're going to do. That shouldn't take more than five minutes. All three of them around the table, everybody has their stuff pulled up for you, either written down or pulled up on different tabs, and they just go. 30 seconds per tab. This is what I have to do. This is what I did. This is what I have to do. So that's the two things. What did you do? What do you have to do? So I told her they may lie. They may lie because kids lie. <laughs> but you are showing that you are on them. You're taking an interest. And it doesn't have to take your whole day. Right? Because the kids love attention. If you're fussing over them and you're in their face all the time, they'll do things because, oh, they like the fussing, you know, and the little rubbing on their head. Oh, you can do it. Or the little hugs. They like that. So before you start, come for your hug. Do your work. When you're done, come for your hug, you know, or between your breaks. But you as a parent, you're not a teacher, like I said earlier. You shouldn't have to be running class at home. So you tell them at the end of the day, this is what we're going to do. Remember, at the end of the week, I'm going to get the summary from the teacher. Mm -hmm. So if you are not showing me what you should be showing me, then I am still going to get with the teacher at the end of the week. I'll read that summary and then you and I will have something to work out. You will be in trouble with me. You don't want that. And your reward for the end of the week is waiting for you. You want that. So handle well, your business. Good. Your job that is to win. Huh? That's a reward, Zoe. Of course. The daily bribes and the weekly bribes. <laughs> I have some parents who only do the weekly bribes. They're like, okay, you have me going to look for a reward every day. I'm like, yes. If they like chicken and chips, make chicken and chips. That's a reward. Instead of making a kubuyo, because they don't want kubuyo. I would take the kubuyo, but. <laughs> <laughs> you have to mix it up. Yes. Mix up the words. So if, yes. they want to, if they want to probably go hang out with, with a cousin or whatever, you know, mix it up. There, there are different ways to do it. Um, I know, like, a lot of parents are, are going through the, their own, like, their own burnout, and some of them are unable to figure out a lot of times what the teacher is, is teaching to help their the students. And I know it happened before online school, um, uh, but it's gotten a bit worse because now you are li you literally have to be there sometimes to kind of guide them. What are some of um, the things you think uh, us parents can do uh, when we're trying to kind of, I call it kind of bridging the gap because we have to... Mm -hmm. Sometimes my son, I remember my son came in the room the other day and he asked me something about factors. And I can't, like, I'm like, dude, like, I did English, I didn't do maths. Like, I know more than factors. Okay, factors. Factors is grade five or grade six. Not remember. <laughs> and admit, I'm not even going to front. Right? I can do and then he says to me, Oh my god, mommy, you are um you are not smarter than a fifth grader. Oh like, <laughs> I'm like, I probably am not because I don't know anything about factors. So of course, thanks to little Google, I Googled, you know, because I think he wanted to know. Uh, so I can't remember exactly what it was, the executive number of something and whatever. So I just asked Google and Google, you know, Google's your best friend when you need it to be. Um, and I got some help. I was able to figure it out. But mm -hmm. a lot of parents, a lot of the stuff, sometimes the children, granted, you may have done it in school, but it's how many moons ago? You know, It's not something that you actively use every single day, you know? So how how do I not look stupid in front of my kid? You know? <laughs> well, first of all, those kids are smarter than us, number one. So I tell them, okay, TikTok and Snapchat and all of that. I'm not even going there with you. But there are things that you will learn differently from me and things that I've learned that you will never learn because your education is different. So don't come for me because you have your learning. I have my learning. Okay? I'll support you as much as I can but I'm not your teacher. You have a question, let's write it down so that when you're online with the teacher next class, you are going to ask the teacher. Because a lot of parents feel the pressure to be teachers at home, and that, that shouldn't be. That shouldn't be. So what you should do as a parent, I know you want your kid to excel. You want your kid to do well. Don't do their work for them. Oh, as for that, 
As for that, <laughs> you know, but throwing I'm not, right I'm not, I'm not guilty. I'm talking for those that are guilty because I am not. I am. I will never miss about my work. I will never <laughs> be a work for you. Yeah, but I know a lot of parents do that, and sometimes I just send the kid back. I'm like, I never taught you plus parfait. The only thing I taught you was passé composé. Where you coming in plus parfait? What does that mean? They cannot even tell you what it means. Oh, my father, my father is Haitian. I'm like, is that your father's homework or yours? And most of them, most times they're honest. They're honest. And they go back, they fix their business, they lose their 10% or 20% or whatever it is. That is, you know, your penalty for not doing your own work. And then let's try again. But I know the pressure is there to do the best we can for the kids. And the, our job as parents should be supporting them as we can, whether or not you Google it, but put it back on the classroom, but help them to articulate it, help them to articulate it and then ask the teacher. A lot of teachers like that because online, sometimes it's a ghost town. Kids put off their cameras, they put it off and they go and play their game. <laughs> some parents don't care or some parents are at work they don't care if you're playing. As long as you're screen on, you wouldn't get in trouble. Okay, let's go. You know? But sometimes, like you say, the kids have their tricks. Some kids take a screenshot of themselves, of the classroom, and they put it up. So if the parents peep, peeps behind their head, the parents would see all the students in the class. And those Why kids they do that? It. Of course. They take a screenshot and they put it up there. So the person like, oh, okay, class is in session. And those kids on their, on their phone playing something else. So I tell parents, look, kids are kids. They will always find their tricks. And you have your own life, your own things that you have to do. So you give them their, it's time management again between you and them, your life and their life. This is our check-in time every day at 3 o'clock or when I come from work at 5 o'clock. And at the end of the week, when I get the summary, we'll talk. So they know that check is coming at the end of the week, whether or not you watch it. But you still tell them that you're going to watch it. And they know that. And then you promise them that reward at the end of the week. So they know, oh, okay. I know if I don't do that, mommy will take my phone for two hours. And I cannot miss that two hours. You know? And like I said, all the rewards do not have to be monetary. It could be depriving them of something, or it could be giving them something, something that is non-monetary, you know? Let's go down the hill and take a sea bath. You love to swim? Okay. So know what they like and then capitalize on that. Wow. I hope you guys are enjoying this conversation here with Terry Garneau, a.k.a. the teacher strategist. Um or my sister just joined. I hope they didn't watch the show to make that list in advance. She said. <laughs> <laughs> and let me tell you, my son will go back and he will check it out. If he like, once he see, he can get access to my my laptop. And he'll go and he'll check it out and he will say, "Oh, oh, that's what you're saying about us." You know, like you know, <laughs> he'll banter with me about all of these different different things. Like they have their ways. Um, that way they try to get away with, with a lot of stuff. And to be honest, I, I'm glad that you're saying, you know, it's it's not my job to do your work. Nope. Because a lot of times I feel I I have felt in the past that the teacher was sending homework for me. Mm -hmm. You know, I felt that I was like, but but I not because I remember as a child asking my father to help me with my homework and he'd tell me, No. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yes. Make, me, make sure I do my own. The only time he would really help me is when I had to build things, you know, like I had to build mm -hmm. a way and um, these these kinds of things. So so it was kind of instilled in me to not give that extra assistance. But I feel sometimes, you know, we see they they're working so hard on a little homework there and they're there for how long and they come. And especially when you have a child that has a bad handwriting and you're trying to get them to write properly. So you're erasing it and you're writing it for them and they and I just see them watching me. And I'm gonna erase it back, you know. You know, so, so they, they know how to mm -hmm. like how to really, really get to to you in terms of in terms of making you do what and I think that is probably my my a lot of parents 
biggest issue with homework is knowing that you want the child to finish and finish it now or finish it quickly so you go and you help them you know you help them um put it together or you or you help them source the information or you help them how do we i know there are a lot of tools that are out there for children to use to help with their homework i know some people have children in afternoon classes and all of these different things but as parents how do we how do we really say no when our child is really struggling with an assignment and we know the answer like if it's a composition and or we know how to help it finish faster how, how, how do we say no so the saying no is not really saying no because what you're saying is i see you struggling i want to help you but i also want you to grow and learn on your own so that is where you come in with the communication with the teacher remember that relationship i spoke about before so you help the kid to articulate i stayed up for two hours working on this this is what i understood this is what i didn't understand can you help me to figure this out you send the, the, the kid with that if he comes home and he's like mommy the teacher don't even take me on she even answer my question i put it in the chat or i say it and she ignored me then you email that teacher and you say hey I need your help. My son understood this. He didn't get this. How do I ensure that I am supporting his learning? Now, the teacher cannot watch you and say, do it for him. You know, and the teacher is not supposed to tell you, well, get him extra lessons. The teacher is supposed to guide you to find a response to help to support your students. You know, so try your best not to internalize it. I always tell parents and teachers as well to give yourself grace. Give yourself grace. You are not a superhuman one. You may want to be a super parent. I understand that. But you are not a superhuman. Give yourself grace. You know your limits, you know, and you stressing over what the teacher should be doing to support your kid is not helping you or your kid. So help your kid to advocate for themselves and if you're seeing that that is not working you advocate for your kid through by speaking to the teacher because that is your role to support the kids emotional health mental health emotional and mental growth to help them to be you know a global citizen a well-adjusted kid and doing his work if you keep on doing his work for him what do you think going to happen when he leaves school you know it's life skills we're teaching them too and then That's some right. teachers have learned to like take back the demands on on parents they've learned to okay maybe i send too much homework home maybe i need to break this down further before i send it home because some parents boog on in the back but they never approach a teacher or they never ask the kid to approach the teacher and the, and the teacher is thinking okay everything is going great because the kid is turning in the work but they don't see the five hours that the kid is putting, putting up, you know? The final thing I want to ask, and I don't know if guys, if you have any questions, shoot your questions because I'm about to ask my final question. And after I ask my final question, I shut it down the show. So <laughs> if you have your questions to ask, now is the time to ask your question. The teacher strategist is joining us here, right here on JL Joseph Live. My final question is, a lot of parents who are home now are forgetting that their children are in school online so a lot of the things that will happen is you'll probably hear Giovanni where's the milk oh where you put it <laughs> how as parents do we put ourselves in the mind frame that they're in school even if they're there but they're in school like to not disrupt their class because we forget and it's so natural like they're there we need something we know that the person that probably misplaced it where's the remote oh you know stop. how do we get away from that okay so i understand the distraction and i've heard some crazy things and seen some things i shouldn't be seeing yeah we wouldn't go there but yeah 
So <laughs> I always encourage parents that if you have a place, you have a location somewhere where kids can be separate, whether it's your bedroom, whether it's their bedroom, you know, if you have a place, like one of my students that I support, his house is very small, but the balcony is a quiet place because not a lot of cars pass, like the balcony is towards a place where people walk. So no one then you might hear people talking, but that's the quietest place in his house. So he is using the balcony. So if you are able to get a quiet place, do that. But realize your home environment has changed. So between 8 to 1, 7.30 to 2.30, whatever time it is, the home environment has changed. So be mindful of that. Another thing, if you're in a space where you just don't have a place where you can put your kid by himself or herself, try to blur the screen so that the things that are seen behind <laughs> or the, the naked people passing at the back, <laughs> yes, I've seen a few, <laughs> that that doesn't come out for the whole class to see, okay? The other that's thing an, is- That's an embarrassment for the child too, you know? I know, and the child has to relive that. And then kids take screenshots. So they took the screenshot of the naked mama passing at the back, and then they tease the kid about it. They send it to other people. It's a mess, let me tell you. So you want to blur the background so whatever is happening is not seen and encourage the kids to mute themselves. Um, I, I encourage my teachers to do that, to tell the kids to mute themselves and when they need to participate in a game or in a discussion, then they unmute and then um, you talk, you know, but... Um, <laughs> <laughs> you guys are the comments are coming in. I know. I like that one. Put a sign that says school is in session around the house. Yes. 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 For noisy parents, neighborhoods. Exactly. And some of my parents make their kids dress in their uniform. Some of them don't. But in Dominica, they don't have a choice. In Dominica, I heard all, that. Of the, I, all of the students must come to school in their Giovanni wears the same shirt Monday to Saturday, Friday. And we wash it on Friday, so we hang in and we watch. <laughs> and I am, I, I guess they're trying to teach him discipline. I'm trying to teach him conserving. Yes, yes, I like that. I like that. <laughs> yeah, but like it puts the kid in a frame of mind to learn, and it also puts the house. Oh, he's dressed, it's time for school, you know. Oh, mm -hmm. as soon as he sits down in front of his desk, his table, okay, it's time for school. So it's a learning process. So don't be too hard on yourself. You say, Jelani, pass the bread. You know, it's like it will come. It's a learning process. So just take it as it comes. So you don't have the quiet place. Put him in a place where this is school time. He's dressed. He's ready to go. Just try and manage it with him. We have a question. My daughter gets frustrated when she don't get the answer correct on the first try. What can I do to encourage her to keep going? That's from Arlene Filbert. Okay, Arlene. Um, thanks for that question. So we have some kids like that where they are so motivated that, yeah, I'm smart. I need to get this first try and go, you know? what you can encourage her to do one don't be too hard on herself and two find a different way another way to look at it you know oh you look at it this way come let's work let's work think of it even if you don't put your hands in it you say think of it think of different ways to get it just keep on encouraging her positively and try and teach her or try to get her to understand that it's okay. That's how human beings work. We make mistakes, we learn from it, and we get stronger in the future. So you made this mistake, now you got it correct, guess what? You're stronger for it. You know, so I encourage her like that. We have another question. Melinda is saying, Terry, hi, great advice. Touch a bit on advantages, if any, of online learning. What can both parents and students take away from this experience? All right, so there are some advantages. So I'm a classroom person. When I teach, I'm walking around. I never sit down until it's my lunch break. And 
I know it's if it was hard for me to sit down and teach, even if all my paintings and my flowers and so around me, I can imagine how it is for parents and for students. So some of the advantages for students is they have a resource right there with them. They have their laptop, their phone, their whatever, where they can research information in real time. So as a teacher is teaching, they don't have to wait to go home and look it up. They're like, hey, miss, I, I got the answer, you know? So they can pull up the answers in real time. So that one is one of the advantages of it. Um, two, there are some students who are more comfortable at home than at school because you have either bullying or some other thing going on at school, but their home is their safe zone. So being at home, they're more comfortable and some of them learn better like that, you know? Another thing is transportation and economics. You know, some parents have to really struggle to send their kids to school, um, to pay the transportation, you know, and so on to send them to school. Like um, JL was saying, she makes Jelani wear that one shirt for the whole week. Jelani wear it for the whole week. Exactly. So some parents get that break of having, and he could have his shorts. I'm sure they're not seeing the shorts when he sit down. They just see the shirt. So some people get the break from having to buy the uniform and all of that. So those are some of the advantages for both the kids and the parents by extension. We have some comments here. I, I want to pull up um, Ms. Hyacinth um, Dupree. Love this woman. So she's on here. She says, oh, dear. Um, I never say no to my babies. I stay up all night side by side with them to help. I even enroll to take classes with them to encourage them. I do research. <laughs> they, con they convert that research into usable information for the assignment. Uh, she goes on to say, uh, I'm, trying to, I'm trying to pull the the full the full um message because it's, it's a long one okay so she goes on to say my children are at university and i will stay up all night with them if they need me to i show show me a great student i will introduce you to a loving and supportive parent keep up the good work is what she's saying so that was um a comment from from high school Ducre. uh we also have um Reg regina is saying here Dylan had a routine and respect the times and was mindful of when he was in Zoom class. It was hard in the beginning, but it worked out, thank God. So, nice. so um, you know, some of the parents are, are thinking, so Kervel has a, a, a question, and mm -hmm. Kervel is actually the one who orchestrated this yes. entire Yes, hey, Kervel. <laughs> I want to pick up Kervel. Uh, Kervel, Kervel, leave me alone, please. <laughs> <laughs> I love Carvel. Carvel, Carvel, you know, will give me advice and she'll come in my DMs. I uh, love her, love, and love, love. And Carvel is saying, do boys and girls learn differently online? That's her question. Yes, Carvel. From what I've seen, what I saw, boys and girls learn differently. My boys, um, it's hard, or it was harder. Thank God I'm back in the classroom. You don't know how happy I am. But anyway, my <laughs> boys, their attention span was shorter shorter than my girls my girls would listen and so on so i would change every 10 to 15 minutes i would change the activities um but my boys would be like i don't buy no can we go run around i'm like sit down you're going in a while relax you know so i had to engage them a lot more so i'd engage the whole class but because of the boys and i had two classes that were heavily boy boy friendly mm -hmm. <laughs> so i would vary my activities more mm -hmm. right and girls would participate more online they would participate more so sometimes the examples i would use when i would teach i would bring in um, football and other things to get boys engaged because it was easier to get the girls to communicate to engage and i used to bribe them well all of them with tickets that they could turn in at the end of each um, semester for a raffle and so on so the cameras were on, they were participating because of the tickets, but it was easier for the girls. 
Mm-hmm. Yes, I think I think there are great ways for us to, to have incentives. And I know it's really economically it can be very tough on teachers, especially in Dominica, because mm-hmm. they don't get a lot of money. I'm not gonna like find yep. so if us parents can give support in terms of you know the teachers, even the I like the games idea in terms of getting everybody engaged. You know, if we can donate little vouchers or little things. Um, I encourage you guys to to do so. I, I'll be making a note of that because that's, I think that's a good idea. Um, it'll help the teacher and in turn it will help you because all the kids will be engaged because there's an incentive. Again, that bribery always seems to roll right back up because those children, yeah. well, that's, uh, um, uh, Ursha is asking, my son does school for my office. How do I prevent him from asking the teacher to excuse him for him to act, come and ask me something not pertaining to the topic the teacher is on. And I'm guessing that her son is younger, uh, so and it's been very difficult for a lot of moms with children, especially children under grade four, to keep them engaged um, in online learning. Hi, Ursha, my choir sister. Nice to see you all. <laughs> yes, it's harder for the younger kids. Um, I teach high school. And well, I coach mostly high school teachers, but the younger kids, I know it's harder for them. Um, what you can do is play a game with him, Ursha. Okay? Listen to the teacher. And every time you want to ask me a question, just raise your pencil. And that will be how many points you get. But hold your questions till the end. So let's say he raises his pencil five times. Five times, okay, you have five points. You know what that five points mean? Five cents for you. So every time you raise your pencil, but you stay in your seat, that is a point, okay? So it's like, it's not like he needs something, but he wants to come and meet his mommy. He wants to come and talk to you, but you want to encourage him to stay there. Turn it into a game. Okay, you have five points now, let's go. At the end of it, you'll get your five cents. You know, something like that to... Um, just keep them engaged in what you want them to be engaged in. If he likes reading, okay, five points, so I'll read five pages for you, something like that. <laughs> that is actually an awesome, uh, I, I mean, I can see it happening for not just the smaller kids, but the older kids, because my son will come like random names. He like he came this morning and he came with his two hands in his pocket. Mommy, I know exactly what I want for my birthday. Are you supposed to be in class? <laughs> like, <laughs> he's like, yeah, but I'm about to get a break. How do you know you're about to get a break? And I still hand it to you talking. You're like, no, it just came to me, mommy. Can you just listen? <laughs> you know, like, it just came to him. And when it came to him, he had to come and tell me. So I, I guess having any, another boy, that's all that's a lot of bribery. I'm going to have to make up a whole board <laughs> of things to bribe my kid <laughs> on. <laughs> that's a lot of incentives. But I definitely love it. I think it's great. And everybody can pull you know, pull a little something out of it because your child might not be everything that we, we just discussed here tonight. Um, yes, yeah. You might be able to pull out certain things from from this. Terry, it has been such a pleasure Same having you here. on here uh, with me uh, to speak on how, I know you, 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 you're, you coach mostly teachers, but it was great having you talking from uh, the teacher's perspective, looking in, and seeing some of the things that are happening that could be fixed if the parents are probably more supportive or less burnt out or able to navigate this whole system of online learning better. And I truly appreciate you taking the time out of your busy schedule to come and share with our parents um, about how to manage during, uh, how to online, you know, during yes. this <laughs> tough times. I truly, truly appreciate it. And I'm sure a lot of the people uh, who are on here. Um, Tarina just came on. She goes, thank you, Miss Terry. You are blessed to take to the next level. Take thank it to the next Tarina. level. Everybody's like shouting you out and saying saying how um, how lovely this program was. And I'm, I am absolutely grateful for you coming on. Did you have any final words before we wrap up? Yes, I have a few final words. One, go easy on yourself. Go easy on yourself. We say Dominica is the happiest place on earth. Let's prove that, you know? Relax, go easy on yourself. Give yourself grace. Remember, you are not the teacher. You are the parent. You are there to support your kids' emotional health, their mental health, that growth. 
okay and their physical health too so if you see them needing a break tell them go run around come back you know so you're there to support that just do that to the best of your ability and encourage them to advocate with their yes drink a jelly i love that Tarina. you know um if there are any teachers on here i also support teachers in helping you not to burn out so I have this group on Facebook called the Stress-Free Teacher Society, Stress-Free Teacher Society, where every Friday I go live, I answer questions and so on for teachers. So you can contact me, you can join that group, and there are teachers from all over the world in there that can and we support each other. If you are a parent, because I, oh, well, most of you are parents, but I also support students, so by you by extension, and teachers separately at the teacher strategies, both on Instagram and on Facebook. Um, so you can contact me there if you have any more follow-up questions. But honestly, kids are so, so much joy, so much love. They, the more we support them, the better they are, the stronger they get. So give yourself grace, show them the love, and everything will work out. It was a pleasure being here with all of you. Thank you very much, uh, Terry, for, for joining yeah, us yeah. here. And um, I hope you can join us again um, some other time in the future and, and probably give us some more advice or more tips or, or probably teach us a lesson or something. I like a say, you know, like like I heard you, they call you, your children call you Madame, Madame Bino. So we, so we, I guess, we, we, we. Eh. <laughs> <laughs> so I can't speak the Korean, but not the French. <laughs> <They're close enough. laughs> it was it was it was lovely having you on here with us here this evening. And thank you for your time. Thank you for your 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 gems, your your word of advice, and and all the different things that you taught us as parents on how to online. Uh, all the best. Thank you. Bye. You're welcome. Bye, guys. Bye. Guys, thank you very much uh, for tuning in. It was so much fun having all of you on here. If you are just logging on or if you logged on and you, you looked at this show in its entirety and you absolutely enjoyed it and you think that this can benefit another parent, don't hesitate to tag another one of your friends. Um, right, just tag them in the in in this. Just tag them. All of the links are listed um, uh, listed above. Teacher strategies on Facebook. You can find her. You can find her on Instagram. And and once you get on her Instagram and her Facebook, you can always message her and ask any of the other questions. I truly appreciate all of you for joining me right here. Make sure you tag a friend. Let them know about the show and and share it with someone that you love or someone that you just no is looking for that extra piece of advice um as it relates to online school it's tough times but we can make it through remember one of the things she said you know be easy i like to say be good to yourself always and thanks again for tuning in until next time